Remember when you were a kid and you thought, man, if only I could be invisible, I could uh, go into the girls' bathroom, the girls' locker room, or I could hide from my parents and then scare them or something like that. Not once, not once did we think I could mind fuck the shit out of somebody. <laughs> What's happening, film friends? Dave the Film Junkie here, bringing you a film review of The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man stars Elizabeth Moss, Oliver Jackson Cohen, uh, Aldous Hodge, and uh, it's written and directed by Lee Winnell. Winnell? I have probably been saying Wannell because, well, I used to, everybody used to call Henry Cavill Henry Cavill. The Invisible Man is, of course, about this uh, woman who uh, is played by Elizabeth Moss named Cece or Cecilia. He was in a very toxic, bad relationship with a bad dude, but he's really, really smart. Like, he's, like, invented things. So, yeah, once she gets out of that relationship, she has a clean break and is kind of hiding out. Well, something is haunting her. And it's, well, you know, it's him. And creepy, thrilling things ensue, and he basically mind fucks the shit out of her. I mean, that's what this is, because she ends up looking crazy, and a lot of just craziness happens. But that's pretty much all you can say about the synopsis there. So what did I think of The Invisible Man? <sighs> so good. Lee went all. Fell in love with this guy when he wrote Saw and starred, co-starred in Saw. Uh, with James Wan, of course, uh, directing, and then just, like, making this really small low-budget horror movie that fucking had one of the best twists in cinema. And then he's also done other writing creds with uh, James Wan uh, as well. I think he wrote on Death Sentence. He wrote on uh, De Dead Silence, the one with the ventriloquist dummies, which had a crazy twist at the end. They're all have t crazy twists. You know, he was part of the Insidious movies, Conjuring. And yeah, I mean, ever since uh, when he did Upgrade, uh, everybody was like, okay, he just handled like this little low budget sci-fi movie that really worked and of course had his twisty turning kind of sense to it. Now he's going to take on Invisible Man and just the, I remember seeing the first trailer and it just intrigued me because to bring it into the 20th century or 2020, to have the Invisible Man, it's like, yeah, well, how do you bring that? I mean, obviously when it comes to the other Universal Monster movies, haven't really quite worked at all. So what are you going to do with the Invisible Man? You got to give it something fresh and... Basically, if you were to watch this movie from some one of the other characters' perspectives, you would think that Elizabeth Moss' character is fucking losing her shit. That's what I loved when I saw the trailer because it really gave that sense to it. And you're like, wow, that's a good take for the Invisible Man. And I tell you what, throughout the movie, you just kind of go like, even though you know what's happening, you're going, yeah, she's fucking crazy because Elizabeth Moss is so good in this movie. Very good. Awesome performance. Fantastic performance by her. And then, uh, yeah, it just went on in, in the way that he builds tension. I mean, he, he made this movie for seven million bucks, which is great because you could tell they used every little bit of that. And it, it's pretty easy to keep that budget low when essentially the bad person is invisible. But that's where he utilizes the camera, sound effects, and of course, the score that just brings out this tension throughout. Because you're like, is it there? Is he there? I mean, he'll pan over and you're like, is something there? I don't know. And then something ends up happening. You're like... Holy shit. Speaking of holy shit, there's some holy shit moments in this movie. One in particular, I won't say what it is, don't worry. I won't spoil it. I mean, it just comes out of the whole theater. There was a woman next to us who just lost her shit. But it was, everybody just went, oh my god. Like, because you just did not see it coming. And it's fantastic. Now, when it comes to, like, my gripes, eh, they're, they're tiny. They're a little bit, you know, it's just, it's stuff, it's convenient stuff. That I that I kind of describe about. Um, I won't say what it is because you know some things I just there can be in spoiler territory. But I mean, there's one in particular thing where I was like, "Where is everybody else?" I mean, I know what happened to get them, but what? Like, why? Oh, she man, there was somebody. Okay, and okay, you could really start ripping it apart when you start questioning like the convenience of certain things. Sure, but it just they're 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 small, they're minor. It's only like a couple of little things, and it doesn't ruin the overall experience because, like I said, Winnell really uses the camera and everything. I mean, you could tell that he got inspiration from James Wan because James Wan is a king at building up tension and suspense when it comes to his shot, not just doing a fucking jump scare. Hey! Yeah, they're just a little cheap, like oh. 
it was a fluttering bird or a stupid fucking cat. Now, the jump scares that are in here are utilized with precision and they work. And they're not like a whole bunch of them. It's mainly just tension where you're like, what the fuck's gonna happen? Stop it, stop it, stop it. And then sometimes something doesn't even happen and I love that. I love that and I love this movie. Can't wait to see it again. So naturally, I'm gonna put it on the favorite wall of 2020. Get that fuck up there. I won't put an invisible poster. That'd be so fucking stupid. It was stupid that I just said that right now. There you go, guys. Please go see The Invisible Man. If you enjoyed Upgrade, if you enjoy just a, just a low-key thriller horror movie, date movie, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's it, it's a perfect... Like I said, it, 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 Winall is good at the twisting. He'll twist one way, then twist the other, and then you wonder if he's going to twist back again. It's just... He's so good at uh, he's so good at that. That's what he that's what he started his career on with the first Saw movie, and it's absolutely fantastic. So there you go, guys. That is my review of the Invisible Man. Let me know if you saw it down below in the balls area and what you thought about it. Hit that like thumbs up button if you'd be so kind. Subscribe to my channel, FilmJunkie.com, for all my content. Follow me in the sock meds over there: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon down below too if you want to help out, and shirts to order down below. All right, guys.